All right, now let's talk about the basics of skin retouching using On One Photo. Now the skin retouching pane lives in Develop and Effects, but I prefer to use it in Effects because I get a little bit more control. So I'm gonna walk you through the basic way that I would use it. First, open your photo into Effects. You could have done other work before in Develop to do your basic tone and color corrections. And then once you're in Effects, click on Add Filter and select Skin Retouching. This will add a skin retouching pane. The first step is to pick the color range of your subject's skin. This is a really important part. So you grab the dropper tool and you click on a mid-tone of the subject's skin. Not a highlight, not a deep shadow. Pick something usually on the forehead as a good place to work. The reason this is important is the skin color is used to create a selection automatically for just the skin color. When we go down to the range slider and we grab that, you'll actually see what that selection looks like. Anything that's black is unselected. Anything where you see the natural photo through it is selected. Anything that's grayish over the top is partially selected. So you can see at its default here, most of the skin is selected. There's some highlights on the skin that we haven't gotten. I can then adjust that range slider up to make sure that I get all the skin. Now keep in mind, as the range increases, more and more of the photo is gonna get that skin retouching look to it. So fine details like eyelashes and such are gonna get lost. Now that's okay, because I'm gonna show you the way that I like to use it. I'm gonna add that at a pretty high setting. Then we'll go to the masking icon right here. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna say invert. So what that does is it's removed the effect. Now I can paint it in just where I need to on my subject's skin. And we'll do that with the masking tool. The masking brush is already selected. It's already been set to paint in up here. Now all I need to do is just paint in on the skin. This doesn't have to be super accurate. That's part of the beauty of this. Now you could use the regular brush or you could turn on the perfect brush option. Uh, both work pretty well. If you have a subject with darker colored hair, a lot of times I'll turn that perfect brush option on and we're just gonna paint across the skin where we want to apply that skin retouching. You can always turn on the mask preview. This helps you see your mask. When I'm working on a portrait, I like to use the red overlay mode. And that'll let me see the selection just against the skin. The important part is I wanna make sure that I'm not getting any of that skin retouching on areas that I wanna keep sharp. So things like the eye and eyelashes and the lips. So I'm just gonna kinda of carefully retouch those areas out. Again, these don't have to be perfect. That's part of the beauty of this. We just need to get in the ballpark. And we can always fine tune these later if we need to. Using a brush with a bit of feather is always a good idea. I can even add in the neckline if I want to, just make my brush a little bit bigger and paint down here across the neck. A little bit of hair is not gonna be bad. It'll soften hair just a little bit, but not too bad. And if you don't like what you've done, you can always paint it back in. There we go. Don't agonize about having a perfect mask. All right, I'll hit the O key. That's the same thing as hitting the mask button right here and turn that mask on and off. And now I'm just gonna turn the pane on and off so you can see the difference of before and after. So there's before and after just with our default settings. Now we can go in and we can really tune things for what we need. Now I like to zoom in just a little bit when I make these adjustments. And we're gonna grab the blemishes, the smoothing, the shine and the evenness slider. I'm gonna bring them all the way down to zero to start. And we'll start from the top and work our way down. We'll start with the blemishes slider I'm gonna turn that up. The blemishes slider is going to reduce medium sized texture in the skin, uh, blemishes like acne, things like that. And depending on the photo, you may or may not see a huge difference from it. So you notice in this photo, it's helping to reduce some wrinkles around the nose. There we go. The smoothing slider is like powder. It's going to reduce the overall shine and the overall pore structure of the skin. So I'm gonna turn that up to my taste. Oh, probably around 40 for this shot. Shine, we'll do skin shine. Not a whole lot, you'll see a little bit on the end of her nose. We can pull that back to reduce that skin shine. And then the evenness slider evens out the hue across the skin. She's got a lot of pink in her skin. Pulling that evenness slider will help to even out that skin hue. There we go. All right, now let's go back to fit and we'll take a look at that. You always wanna kinda of toggle back and forth between a magnified view and your fit view because it's really easy to lose the context of your retouching when you're zoomed in. You tend to over retouch. This lets you pull it back. So now I can see before and after. And oftentimes if I've done it a little too much, I'll just grab the opacity slider and I'll back it off just to dial in the amount that I want. So I can go from very natural to a very strong retouch just using opacity, just like that. 
All right, so there you go. That's the basics of skin retouching. In the next video, we'll talk about more advanced skin retouching using some of the retouching tools and some of the fine tuning options. Thanks for watching.